Coming up next on Primary Care, we're on the road in Charlotte, North Carolina at the Healthy Churches 2020 Conference to speak to founder Dr. Vanessa Seal about the role of the black church in fighting health disparities. Everything in our community is a public health issue, so we must have the commitment from the church to address public health issues. Hello, I'm Dr. Lonnie Joe, and welcome to Primary Care. Should the black church be at the forefront of eliminating health and healthcare disparities in their congregations and communities? Given the high rate of chronic illness in the black community and the social and economic problems that contribute to it, many faith and public health leaders believe it's time for the church to take the lead in reducing health disparities. My guest today is Dr. Pernessa Seal. Dr. Seal is the CEO and founder of The Bomb in Gilead, an organization that provides support to over 10,000 faith institutions in implementing health education and service programs. She also founded Healthy Churches 2020, a national health conference that brings together faith leaders and health professionals to combat health disparities. Dr. Seal, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. This is a fantastic conference, and we'll get back to the conference, but you personally have a long history of joining faith-based institutions and medical professionals together, and now we're faced with this concern as to whether or not the church should really step up and take a lead role in terms of how the health of a community is approached. Why do you feel that way, and what's the, what's the story behind that? Well, you know, uh, this all got started in 1989 when the AIDS epidemic was raging in Harlem. I was working in Harlem Hospital and 100% of the people were dying at Harlem Hospital. And there was no faith community coming, there was no mom, dad, it was just people were dying alone. And I got an idea, and that idea was a Harlem week of prayer for the healing of AIDS. Mm. And even though it was the Harlem week of prayer for the healing of AIDS, it really was a public health intervention that was culture and a cultural concept to bring faith communities into a conversation and support for people living with HIV and AIDS. Wow. 28 years later, that little Harlem Week of Prayer for the Healing of AIDS is now the bomb in Gilead. But our work can remains the same because I believe that the most influential institution in the African American community is the church. And although the church has taken many different changes, and it's not the church that we probably grew up in, you know, 60 and 70 years ago, it is still the most influential institution. And when we look at all the health challenges in our congregations, from diabetes to Alzheimer's to HIV to hepatitis C to lung cancer, you name it, we have it. And we must become committed to addressing these issues in our uh, community. And I believe we need every church. Every church needs to have a health ministry, but not just having it. We need people who are responsible, who have resources and skills and knowledge to be able to, to help folks in their congregation and community. So this conference, Healthy Churches 2020, is really about bringing people who have been you know, asked to run the health ministry to this conference to get the tools and resources to take back home that they are now connected to help folks with the, not just prevention, but also disease management. So every church needs to have a health ministry and embrace the idea of a health ministry within the congregation. What does it look like? There is no one model of a health ministry. There are churches who have a health ministry and the only thing they do is a health fair every year. Well, that may be all that they can do, but let's have an effective health, health fair. fair. You know, there may be a uh, health ministry that they have health coordinators and they are running a, a gospel fitness program once a week. You can go in and get exercise, you know, and that's fantastic. We need, every church, I believe, need to be, we need to be doing something about our fitness. And of course, we have churches who actually have full clinics connected to them. Let's help churches uh, be able to evaluate 
their health programs. Let's help them learn how to do better grant writing for their programs. So the Healthy Churches Conference, we meet those churches wherever they are. If you don't have a health ministry, we help you to learn how to start one. If you have a little health fair, we help you to get better at your health fair. If you have a full-fledged clinic or a health program, we want to be able to help you evaluate that program and how to do data collection and how to write grants for that program. So I think it's, a, it's, a, it's not a monolithic model. It's what do you need in your community? Because when you look at our health concerns, we need to become committed to addressing health. So in our, in our community, like in most communities, but more so in our community, the conditions of illness are multifactorial. What, do, what are we looking at if, if we talk about a healthy uh, church and a healthy community and the role that the church plays in it? We have to ask the question, are we really equipped to handle them? And if not, how do we get there? You touched on that a little bit, but what can we do to make the, the, the workforce and an approach to this better. How do we train the troops to get them to the point that they are more effective in these efforts? Well, I think, you know, it all, we, it all begins with the pastor. Not necessarily the pastor is going to do the work, mm -hmm. but the pastor has to have a mindset that he wants to become committed to addressing the health in his congregation. We, must, we want every pastor to say, you know, we need to have someone, maybe Sister Mary, Sister Sarah, Brother John, to really take on this health ministry concept. The nurses, the physicians, many of our congregations have nurses and physicians in there. We need a leadership position from the pastor that this is something that's important. With that, we also know that pastor, let's not just serve fried chicken. Let's change what we are serving the people. Pastor, you know, I suffer from, my, my, my illness is obesity. And I was an obese child from growing up in Lincolnville, South Carolina. And you know, I, we, and I can tell you about the mindset that started my entire struggle with obesity for my entire life. In my, at the church I go to now in Richmond, Virginia, on Sundays, they give the kids candy for coming to Sunday school. Why? <laughs> so I think there are some fundamental things that we can just, if we just stop and look at what are we doing, you know, just m mindlessly, that's not helping the health conditions of our community and our congregation. There are some simple things, some practical things that should replace bad habits in the culinary arts kitchen of the church. Exactly. Uh, and, and some of it is, is, is nothing but a, a approach top down with leadership leading the way to say this is what we're going to do. You mentioned weight. That's a serious problem in the black church. I would, as, as a practitioner uh, who, who goes to church at least twice a week, <laughs> you know, the, the, the idea of losing weight is only thought of when we're on a fast. <laughs> the Daniel fast. The Daniel fast. And then we break the fast with the fried chicken or fish dinner. <laughs> Absolutely. We, we blow all the progress right out of the water with the next meal after the fast, okay? So this should be incorporated into the lifestyle thinking, the teaching, not only of uh, the, the parishioners, but the people who are actually conducting these programs, whether they be uh, skilled or not in their own profession outside of the church. What I hear you saying, Dr. Seal, is that we can train those people to do these things and to promote these things in this box called the congregation. Absolutely, absolutely. And when we look at the conference, we have many pastors here from all over the country who are here taking notes, who have made a commitment that a part of their every Sunday service is to say something about the health, you know? And even though Sister Mary may not have a high school uh, degree, she is she can be taught how to look at certain uh, symptoms and say, you know what, I need to make a phone call. You know, let's call the nurse down. Some interventions that can happen in our congregations. We Alzheimer's, you know, today the, the African-American women have more Alzheimer's than any Body else. We all know someone who's suffering from Alzheimer's. We all know someone who's providing care to someone. This is a serious epidemic that the church must become involved in because the majority of our, our congregations are old. 
They are older and elderly people. So we have got to take off our little rose-colored glasses and begin to really seriously address our health issues. So this is a broad spectrum approach. Yes. You mentioned uh, dementia. Um, we would like for people to understand and hear what we're saying and not be demented prematurely simply because of poor health states and environments that they've grown up in. So the church can be used as a catalyst to begin to address public health crises because health in the African American community, no matter which disease state you mention, is a public health crisis. It is, including violence. Yes, the new, the new replacement or definition of accidents on the list of social determinants of health. Uh, we, you know, we went through the, the Flint lead poisoning situation right. uh, in Flint, Michigan, uh, not far from Detroit. Uh, but violence is, is where you find it. Uh, there's not, not a lot of difference in, in uh, African Americans dying from lead poison in the water as opposed to lead poison in the bullets. Exactly, exactly. And we must acknowledge that violence is a public health, uh, health issue. Homelessness is a public health issue. Flint water crisis, a pub environmental and public health issue. Everything in our community is a public health issue. So we must have the commitment from the church to address public health issues. Very good. We're gonna break. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Bye, Janet. It's nice seeing you again. See you, you look good, girl. Just let me know what I can do to help. Well, to help me, she'd have to help every day. Every hour, every ouch, every time my wife calls for help. I mean, maybe she could help me make her lunch, but the crust, all the crust has to be cut off the corners. She could help me run to the doctor for the fifth time this week, help me with the specialist and the second opinions and the painful paperwork about paperwork, help me deal with how hard it is seeing my wife's name on so much paperwork. But this is on me. I'm the only one who can do this, like this, for her. Besides... Take care. We will. Janet doesn't like her cooking anyway. Find support for your strength. Visit aarp.org slash caregiving for care guides and community. I never wanted to be associated with heart disease. I never wanted to be the poster child for heart disease. I never wanted people to know that there was something wrong with me. Going through recovery from open heart surgery or being affected by heart disease can be incredibly isolating. It's, it's not easy on your body, on a woman's body. I felt really alone because no one my age really had this problem, never had this issue. And just knowing that there's a circle of women who know exactly the struggles I face every day and are there for me is so empowering. I realized that I wasn't alone, and no matter your age or race, I made friends and found sisterhood and really found a second family that made me feel that I wasn't alone anymore. There's so many ways that you can get involved. You can join the movement, you can volunteer, you can be an advocate, and you can donate. All you have to do is go to GoRedForWomen.org. Hart, what's going on? I'm leaving. Why? What did I do? Not enough. The pressure's too much. I quit. I get it. I can do better. Just please, don't leave. Don't let your heart quit on you. Get your uncontrolled high blood pressure to a healthy range before it's too late. The health ministry at Rosedale Park Baptist Church has been going on for some time. Um, officially, we became uh, known as Fit for Jesus, and that was um, in uh, 2013 is when we officially got our name and uh, started to work together um, as a health ministry. One of the things that's most notable about our church is that we don't have a traditional sanctuary. Our sanctuary is actually um, a gymnasium, and the idea behind that was that we're not here um, all the time in terms of having a church service, so that when we're not here, that the building is open to the community and it serves the purpose of the community. So obviously having a gym, you have basketball hoops and things like that promotes exercise and exercise awareness. And so it's not just for the church members, but it's for the community. Um, we do a lot of initiatives with um, the Smith Homes who sit right behind us. And so they're always open to come
come over and partake in, you know, exercise and other classes that we have here as well. Having the pastor and the leadership um, buy into um, health and wellness and uh, the values of health are very, very, very important. And um, Pastor Cross has done an amazing job in not only talking about it, but also being about it. He's made a lot of changes within himself and he's um, you know, been gracious enough to share those with us. So I think it helps other people realize that it's not just you that's having a problem, or it's not just you that needs to um, maintain their wellness. But when they see leadership, you know, in the same situation, or you know, trying to work on their health, then you know, it gives them the idea that it's important for them, but also that they can do it. Welcome back. We're here at Healthy Churches 2020 National Conference in Charlotte, North Carolina, with Dr. Vanessa Seal, founder and CEO of the Bomb in Gilead and visionary behind the conference. Vanessa, tell us how Healthy Churches 2020 got started. Uh, you said a little bit earlier about it, but this conference is a, seems to be a spinoff from Mom and Gilead that has sort of a separate mission. Well, it doesn't have a separate mission because our whole mission is to build the capacity of faith communities to address health concerns. We came to Healthy Churches because of our 28 years of work in health ministries, helping churches to establish health ministries, working with the AMEs and the AME Zions and the CMEs and the Baptists and everybody. And three years ago, you know, it became very clear that we needed a forum to bring everybody together. We could not, especially with these airline prices, we could not <laughs> continue to fly all over the place all the time doing training, training, training. How could we create one venue that we can address all the concerns, you know? Our health ministries, we need information and understanding about diabetes, uh, everything, all, all of the ills, you know? And we've also partnered with the American Heart Association, with the National to Tobacco and Prevention, uh, the American Cancer Society, because so many organizations have faith initiatives, but they're not doing a very good job reaching and understanding how to reach the faith community because you know I say all the time you have to be called by the Lord to work with black churches. <laughs> um, so this became the melting pot for churches who have health ministries to come and churches who want to have health ministries to come. A, com a place of a skill building conference. Tell us who, who's here in terms of speakers and some of the topics that, that they are uh, 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 presenting on you mentioned people from all over the country but you you've got some uh, Hollywood types here <laughs> at this program well you know this is public health and faith coming together so on the public health end we have uh, Dr. Simple. Barbara Hutchison oh, who seconds. is president of the Believe Association of Black Cardiologists we have Dr. Felicia Hill Briggs who's the president elect of the American Diabetes Association advocate. we have oh, Dr. Karen Winkfield right? who is how, the big oncologist doc Don't from Harvard now to down to here in Wakefield, North Carolina, Dr. Marsha Henderson, who is the commissioner of the FDA. Uh, and those are a few. Uh, we, and we're addressing mental health and depression. Richard Smallwood was here talking about his, his life journey through depression. And then we have Reverend Dr. Jamal Bryant, who preached the word, and Dr. Jazz, who preached the word. And, to, and we will have Bishop W. Darren Moore, from the AME Zion who will preach the word and Charles Jenkins, Minister Charles Jenkins is gonna do a concert. We designed this conference with the black church in mind. The exciting thing is that most black professionals, we are in church. We understand church, you know? And so when people who are not in church, they come to this conference, they're like, wow, you're giving so much. Well, we have to give a lot, you know, because that's who we are. We, we put public health uh, the context of public health into a worship, into the capsule of worship. Uh, and folks often say, well, you know, I've never seen public health and, and faith come together, but this is how it comes together. Six o'clock in the morning, we have yoga. We have gospel fit. So people are out there doing that. We're dancing, we're doing yoga, we're praying, we're worshiping, and we're learning about cardiovascular disease and, and COPD and Alzheimer's. It's all come bring it together. You're a visionary. Where do, where do you see this going? I mean, this is outstanding as it is. What's your wish for Healthy Churches 
2020, uh, except it changed the, the numbers from 2020 to <laughs> something beyond there. The you next know, one right. is 2030. Right. My goal is that this, it's the same goal the churches, pastors, the leadership will get a commitment to make sure that they have at least one or two people at this conference. It doesn't take anything away from the, the, the annual conference or the pastor's anniversary or the next thing to make a commitment that someone from your church comes to this conference to get the information and the skills and get connected to organizations that can support the health interventions back home. People at this conference, they are now connected to the American Heart Association. They are now connected to the National Alzheimer's Association. Get connected and don't take those connections back home so you don't have to always come to the Bomb and Gilead, but you have resources that can support what's going on in your congregation. The American Red Cross is doing a training on CPR here. I have been in church where people actually died because there was no one who can administer CPR. Wouldn't it be great if with all the ills in our community that every church had at least one person who knew CPR? It doesn't take rocket science to know CPR. That's it just true. takes the time to come right. and get the training. Right. Or identify the people who have elevated blood pressures. Exactly. And in six weeks, we're going to see what percentage we can bring to normal with all the skill sets that we have within the church or diabetes. Three months, how can we get these A1Cs down? These local numbers and local people that, aff that we can affect change with, how can we do that over time? That's what, that's what I've been gleaning from this conference, how the tentacles can go out right. and actually affect the community. That is exactly right. And that's what this conference is all about. After this conference, this is not the the conference that you go home and you had a good time, but we are constantly in contact with you and constantly making help. If you don't have those local connections, we're going to help you have those local connections so that you can make a difference in your congregation. There are pastors who, you know, they have the lose weight piece, the, the bring your, just what you just said. You know, let's be creative on how we address our health because we've got to get committed. Right, if we can do an ice bucket challenge in this country, we can do anything. Exactly. Absolutely. Great, it's, great. It, it, exactly. Great. Well, let me again congratulate you. This has been outstanding. This is a labor of love and I feel your passion coming through as you talk about this. Congratulations. We, we're looking forward to lots of good things that happen in and around you in the future. Thank you so much Thank for joining you. us. Thank you so Excellent. much for having Excellent. me. My guest has been Dr. Vanessa Seal, founder and CEO of The Bomb in Gilead and Healthy Churches 2020 National Conference. As we close, I'd like to leave you with some highlights from this conference. The greatest experts in the world have come to be with Healthy Churches 2020. This is the place where public health and faith come together. Public health and faith come together to make a difference in our community. The church is uniquely placed both in terms of our mission as well as our resources. There's a power that comes from the faith community that really is um, needed in order to address the health disparities that so many of us, our families, our churches, our communities are having to deal with. The church is not by chance the number one institution in our culture. We must leverage the church beyond shouting, singing, which I believe in, and speaking in tongues and all that stuff. Hey, that's good. But listen, we need to model healthy living for ourselves and for our young people. We've got to do that. One of the things that our health professionals bring to an environment like this is um, that there is that credibility and trust that uh, pastors and other leaders within congregations are getting accurate information. So there's disparity even in the management of the coronary artery disease. We're not diagnosed as soon as we should, and then we don't get the treatments that we should. And this is where I'm gonna share with you how you all could be a part of the group that helps to change that. The education here has just been phenomenal. The speakers, the professionalism, you know, I just feel honored 
honored to be here. I felt blessed to be a part of something that is helping people become more fit um, through God. But there's been so much information from singers to preaching. The classes are literally phenomenal. I mean, just, I'm, I'm taking so much back, more than I brought with me. I just love the fact that this conference is holistic in nature, that I can be spiritually charged, mentally stimulated, and physically get in shape. This is something that we've been waiting on. We've been trying to figure out, you know, how do we access the churches. I do believe it's about time. I mean, what a minister says from the pulpit really does resonate. You know, with people sitting in the seats. And so we've been looking for this uh, type of avenue. And since we've been here, we've been able to connect with many people who want us to come in and help to support. We do have an organized health ministry, and I am so excited to bring the information back to the church, to the congregation, and especially to the community. You'll find more information about our guests and the Healthy Churches 2020 Conference at our website primarycare-tv.com and connect with us on Facebook and Twitter.